Let me tell you something, man. These are gonna be gems one that day. That one right, right there. That's the good stuff. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be in the Thieves Guild. The thrill, the stealing, being able to get away with anything. To me, that would be even better than being king of Cormier. But back then, we didn't know how until we found WebDM and their episode on evil organizations. So, Jim Davis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we might have D&D &D players out there. Maybe they just want to start their own group, their own cabal, right. their own evil organization. Sure, sure. Let's talk about how to do that. This request came in uh, from one of our Patreon patrons, and we're kind of like taking a look at evil organizations as an antagonist for your campaign. We touched right. on this sort of briefly in Liches, yeah, right? Like a Lich might have a, a cabal yeah. of lesser mages who, who hope to either achieve, achieve Lich to themselves or, or siphon off some of the power from the Lich, yeah. and the ways in which the Lich can kind of use those mortal... Uh, minions in its uh, in its plots, and so like there, there's a reason why you would want to use an evil organization as opposed to just a single big bad evil guy. Right, right, right. that'd be I, big. That we're not talking about the werewolf terrorizing a village or the uh, the thief, the lone thief that's sort of pilfering the houses of nobility that mm -hmm. the players have to find. That that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about structures and an organization and and really something that's going to stick with your campaign for the long haul. Maybe not the entire thing, but certainly for an extended arc. Uh, yeah. as the players kind of work their way through the organization, either in opposition or a as allies. And the DMG kind of touches on this very briefly in, in the fact that there are factions uh, presented in the DMG and what it's like to sort of gain faction benefits. Of course, a lot of that ties into Adventurer's League play and the yeah, factions yeah. that are in Forgotten Realms. But uh, I, I think it's a good idea to kind of flip that and say, well, what about the organizations and the factions that are opposing the players? Right. We're using evil in a very generic sense to, to sort of mean like they are in op they stand in opposition to the players. They might not be capital E evil, they're yeah. just antagonists. Well, yeah, but I mean, the baseline assumption, usually, uh -huh. in playing is that you're playing good characters thwarting evil, right? Sure, like, that's sure, just right. kind of the... the that's kind of the baseline. The, the cliche. Yeah, the heroic fantasy is sort of built on that good versus evil. Right, kind of so sure. what, is our, what is our evil as our organization? Where does it start? You want to have something, an idea, like a goal or an overall sort of theme. So looking at some of the, the examples from Forgotten Realms as, as our touchstone for this kind of thing, the Cult of the Dragon obviously comes out mm -hmm. a, a, as an evil organization. Of course, the uh, Tyranny of Dragons campaign featured the Cult of the Dragon heavily yeah. um, in sort of its newest incarnation. And and the Cult of the Dragon sort of is, is an example of this. They are, at one point, were dedicated to raising uh, evil dragons as Draco Liches, based on this sort of obscure prophecy by their founder that eventually sort of morphs into just a generic cult of Tiamat. Yeah, sort of bringing, worship to, of dragons. Worship of evil dragons, bringing her into the uh, prime material in order to institute a draconic reign of terror, or whatever it is that uh, evil extraplanar entities want to do when they get to prime material plane. Or a reign of fire. Or a reign of fire, true. Good luck. They kind of rehabilitated the Zentarum, but as I remember them, they were the evil organization par excellence. They are involved in smuggling, in the slave trade, in yeah. thievery, in mercenary stuff. While I think some of that maybe is still present, they have been presented as sort of like this more underhanded criminal, but not necessarily evil uh, organization that uh, players can belong to as well. Yeah, yeah. But others include like the Red Wizards of Thay. Yeah, or, they or... used to be evil AF, <laughs> right, right? And right. now they're just like Walmart. For magic. That's just a different kind of evil. Uh, Whoa now. Me. Whoa. What we're talking about here is like there's an organization that that whose purposes and goals and um, and and drive stand in opposition to the player's goals, the player's priorities, what the players believe in. Right, right. And so when you're creating an evil organization that you're going to use in your campaign as an antagonist, you want to think about the the what are the goals of this organization? What, why do they exist? What is their purpose? And that's going to help DMs guide the reactions of the various members of this organization. Mm -hmm. It's going to help DMs give uh, an idea of what they what kind of plots you can come up with, what kind of scenarios you can come up with. And so taking an example of something like the Red Wizards of Fey, maybe they're seeking to extend their influence beyond their national borders, trying to capture uh, sites of magical significance beyond their borders in order to increase their magical power, uh, then that's gonna give you sort of an idea of what sort of 
plots are going to be there? What are, what are they scheming? What are they coming yeah. up with? And then finding ways to insert that in opposition to what the players' goals and priorities are. Yeah, they start going around muscling people out of their land. Right, or they set up nearby, and you know there are, there are a series of villages nearby that, that are worried about all of a sudden this influx of, of red wizards and their minions. Well, what are they there for? They're searching for a magical wellspring of some kind, or seeking to drain the resources of Mithranor or something from the, from the forest nearby. Yeah. Something like that. Like, starting with the goal as yeah. opposed to like specific plots and scenarios means that you you can be flexible and adaptable throughout the course of a campaign whereas if you say like well their, their goal is just this one very specific thing as opposed to mm -hmm. a generic overall direction that the organization is working towards you know if it's just like one rare very specific thing the organization's working for then then that doesn't build in longevity for your campaign yeah what happens yeah when the PCs come in and thwart that one thing right now you're, now you're done. Later on, we'll kind of give some very specific examples of the organizations that we're talking about and things you can do with them. But the uh, that's sort of where I would start. What yeah, are the organization's goals? What are their goals? So now, how do you structure your organization for that? what you were talking about, that mm -hmm. longevity? Mm -hmm. So you might have a, a cellular structure to the organization where uh, individual pockets of members set up shop maybe around a central figure or a leader or a group of more dedicated members who then recruit local people to sort of help them out. Uh, and this this is good for sort of like undercover type stuff. Maybe you've got a, an organization that's dedicated to undermining a kingdom yeah. or spying on a kingdom. And they, they uh, are you know comprised of foreign agents who come in and set up shop. They're local contacts who feed them information, uh, muscle that they hire uh, in order to protect them or, or to use as they see fit. But each individual cell is not connected to any other cell. Yeah. So that if one goes down, uh, you know, the, the others can continue to operate. And then it's kind of like the, you know, the, the party say defeats the local cell that they're in, yay, pat themselves on the back, maybe a few adventures go by before they're like, oh wait, there's another group in the area or yeah. another something. And so it, then it becomes not only rooting out the individual cells, but seeing at what point do those individual cells have a connection. It might be that there's one individual member of the organization seeding these cells throughout. So that's kind of a decentralized way of doing it. You can also go the opposite direction and say there is a person or, or a group of people at the very top of this very hierarchical organization that they have, you know, underlings and lieutenants and those lieutenants have lieutenants and, and so on and so forth, underbosses and captains. And right, like right, that. right. Consigliaries. Sure, and, yeah. and, and that, that each individual part of this overall structure has a purpose and a goal. So you might have the, the uh, mercenary arm of the organization that provides it, internal security, internal muscle, that kind of thing. Uh, the the spell casting arm mm -hmm. of the organization that provides spell casting services to yeah. other members. And it's a very hierarchical chain of command sort of uh, structure, in which case maybe they operate in secret, maybe they operate mm -hmm. in the open. And then of course you can mix and match. You know, Maybe the top levels of the organization are very structured and hierarchical, but as you get towards the field agents, then it becomes like a cell structure. Yeah, it gives you like a buff it gives you kind of like a buffer. Um, you know, th throughout this, I keep thinking of the uh, the TV show The Americans with like the undercover uh, Soviet spies in, mm -hmm. in Reagan, America. Uh, yep. And it's sort of like that's that's sort of a similar way where you have these deep undercover agents recruiting local people, but then they have their handler that they speak to. And ultimately, uh, back to the Kremlin. That's another way. Give some thought to how it's structured. What do you what do you want to accomplish? And, and make sure that the way that you're structuring it will lend itself towards... Uh, Making it easy to game with and create scenarios out of exactly, and and finally, uh, as you as you climb the mountain, uh, you gotta you gotta answer that age old question. It's been plaguing America since the eighties. You know, Angela or, or Tony, who's the who's the boss? The boss, right? Yeah, I right. went there. Yes, you did. Yeah. Um, well, I who is in charge of this organization? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is where you just let your mind run wild. Maybe it's a monster mm -hmm. that is ultimately in charge of the organization. It's an intelligent monster that's created an organization of mortals and, yeah. and sort of human uh, or, or uh, you know, the, the other humanoid sort of races that it, that's recruited. Uh, it could be a lich or other sort of long-lived um, spellcaster of some kind creating it. Maybe it's a triumvirate of, of something. Maybe you've got a you know, a, a hag's coven that uh, that, that they're, this is their organization of spies.
spies and informants and and thieves and assassins that they've uh, that they've been working with all over, all through the years. And the leader of the organization is going to lend it a certain character, right? Yeah. And whoever or whatever you choose to be the leader of an organization will then help you figure out, okay, you know, who are the lieutenants who'd be willing to work with this? creature right. or this entity or this person okay who's willing to work with them and so as you move down the layers you might have people who don't understand what's at the top really the ground troops only know their next contact mm -hmm. and in the middle you know the the sort of like underbosses only know their next contact etc and then at the top you've got whatever it is a beholder that's orchestrating things a a a circle of mind flayers that are sort of controlling the underbosses and then there's that layer of mind control and, and everything mm -hmm. that goes into it. The leader of this organization is your opportunity to color it and to yeah. give it some flavor and to get, inject it with some backstory. And ultimately, it's the enemy that you want your players to come to loathe and to respect right. and to fear and to want to see defeated so that the players then start driving the action forward. Okay, we got to yeah. hit him here. We got to do this. Now we did that. We got to find this guy. And then eventually it's like the cop show with all the pictures and the strings that are attaching each other. Yeah, you gotta have a board up. And depending on whether or not your leader of your organization is some kind of monster or if they're just a human or an elf, you mm -hmm. know, they might be out in the public helping right. people. I mean, it's Wilson Fisk. <laughs> he's, yes. he's trying to help rebuild Will Hell's Kitchen. But his ultimate goal and it is uh, perhaps a bit more uh, obscure. What To what end is he trying to rebuild Hell's Kitchen? Who are the allies that he has? I, I think the, the two seasons of Daredevil and then the season of Defender are a good example of this. And mm -hmm. we'll try to not exactly give, give away a bunch for our viewers who haven't seen it. Yeah. But if, watching these three seasons seasons of of, uh, of of TV you can kind of see how all right in the in the beginning Daredevil's way over here on the side yeah. and just it's a little thing that he notices and then following that lead leads him to the first underboss yeah and then and then okay we're following that string pulling on that thread who's this person connected to now we get to the bigger picture okay I think I've defeated my main enemy mm -hmm. oh, no turns out they had a backer as well yep and allies and things and so eventually it, it grows and metastasizes and, and you're now you're fighting a globe-spanning organization full of ninjas right and so <laughs> um, I, I think that that's a, a good example of it other good examples are things like the wire and and mm. the, the way that the the interplay between uh, the, the forces of the criminals and the forces of, of law and, and how they interplay with each other and just the the, the plotting that goes on uh, any any kind of show or or story or narrative that features an organization is going to be, obviously be fodder for that and so crime dramas stories about mafia or or crime, criminal families yeah those are obviously uh rich fodder for you to steal and uh and use them as inspiration for your game okay yeah and so you know dms use that as inspiration as you see fit obviously right but sometimes your players might want to set up mm -hmm. their own organization whether it be evil or what maybe right. They're not playing true heroes. <laughs> right. They're a little selfish and they, hey, they take out a local group of, of cut purses and they want right. to take over. Your, your, your players have lived long enough to see themselves become the villain. Exactly. Uh, Everybody's <laughs> got a little Harvey Dent in it, right? right. So I think that uh, in, in this case, you know, it could be that, uh, you know, your, your players start taking over parts of the organization that they've cut the heads off of. And it's just yeah. kind of like, well, I took out your underboss. You have two choices. You can work for me or you can die. Yeah. That, that's kind of one way. And, and, and as, as your players sort of work up the chain of command and see how far the organization has either spread itself into all the little parts and, and, and nooks and crannies of your campaign, yeah. then they might see that like maybe going undercover mm -hmm. is a part of that and they will need to know about the organization, its ins and outs, how to, how to uh, insert themselves into that. Uh, maybe they want to set up a rival organization, a, a group that's dedicated to uh, combating their enemies and, and taking on their antagonists. And so I would say in those cases, you want to make sure that there are plenty of NPCs that are kind of on the fence. Right, NPCs that the players can turn to their side. NPCs that the players can go to for information, whether they're having to lean heavily on them, the bad cop tactics or the good cop tactics, uh, another way. NPCs that through clever role playing and good die rolls, uh, that the party can turn to their advantage and yeah. then start building up a rival organization or inserting themselves in undercover. Um, those are the kinds of things that uh, that you can do if you have a large group that's opposing the players. It might take the person at the top 
a long time to figure out what's going on down here in this tiny corner of the organization. Right, right. And maybe by then the players have uh, eaten away enough at it and, and um, inserted themselves enough to, uh, to really uh, cause well, some damage. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of, kind of going back to Daredevil, you know, it takes a while, first season, for uh -huh. them to kind of figure out what's going on because what's it's just on? like... It, one guy's taking all one group of people has take, taken out our, our, our trade in people and right. then you know they've taken out our, our, our drug our drug trade <laughs> right. and like what the hell's going on? We need to figure this out, right? Uh. Uh, and and so you know the players can kind of kind of keep themselves shielded a little bit because of like you know especially if they're doing like at a cellular nature. Mm -hmm. If you're only taking out individual cells, all all the the next tier, and the next, the lieutenants are like, well, I haven't met with them in a right. week or two. It's been, it's we don't, a few times. Let's go check them out. Yeah, we haven't checked our dead drops. We haven't heard yeah. anything from them again, or we haven't gotten a sending spell from them in a while. Things right, like right. that. Part of the reason why you use an evil organization as opposed to a single ba big bad evil guy as your antagonist is that you want the players to spend time getting to know this evil organization, yeah. understanding the backstory you've created for it, and using that backstory in conjunction with their actions to create these connections. You, it, it gives you an opportunity to create villains and antagonists and, and people who oppose your characters that have longevity. They've got the resources to say, come back from the dead. Mm -hmm. Right, the players thought they've dealt with a person, but they didn't secure the body. And the organization brings them and either reses them or, or provides something. Maybe they come back as undead. Maybe they mm -hmm. they come back as uh, from a raised dead spell or something. Maybe um, <laughs> they always reincarnate. So when they come back, it's like a different, yeah, uh, different. Yeah, that's how you get a facelift? That's I can how you see change that. your identity. Absolutely. Yeah, right? that's another one. They, they reincarnate to make sure that, uh, that that the party's not kind of on to them. They always think they're fighting someone different. It's really mm -hmm. just the same person. You know, start out small. The first couple of adventures are whittling away at the henchmen of the underboss's underboss. They're dealing with a little piece of it in the, the trade in illegal health potions or yeah. something like that. And then it grows out of there. A sweatshop labor for uh, halflings. They fight the first boss around third or fourth level. By mm -hmm. the time they're in the second tier, they're they're stuck in and they're, they've are they started to develop their map and they're, they're, mm -hmm. they've got the string that's connecting the individual pieces. Yeah. And then you get up to you know, epic tier play, tier four, and the players are wielding their own power and influence against this one, fighting for control of the city, the kingdom, the plane. Who knows what it is? Because this yeah. is Dungeons and Dragons. You want to inject the fantastical into this. Yeah. You want there to be monsters and magic and plane hopping and and all these kinds of things uh, in conjunction with the organization that yeah. kind of creates it. Although it is fun. I mean, I don't know, being an evil, uh, like a distinct evil organization, though, like to take place in just like a city. You yeah. Know? Then everybody gets to be talking about how my city needs me. You my know? city needs me. They're doing yes. this to my city. Right. You know, like <laughs> it's a way to 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 reel your players in. I mean, yeah. not saying you have to do that. Not saying you have to, but it's a but, it's, it's a good touchstone for it. And and yeah. I like the idea of a crossover between like superheroes and, and Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And there's a there's a certain type of campaign that's between tier one, tier two. That's very much like a vigilante superhero type style of campaign, yeah. except instead of capes and tights, it's chainmail and rapiers and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're kind of doing that in the Saber Dice game. We're not taking on a distinct organization. No, but you are very much that neighborhood's vigilantes. There, yeah. there is no, uh, there is no law. There is no order. There's no city guard to yeah. come and, and and help you out. It's individual members of the community taking it upon themselves to, to solve these problems. So for some examples, um, I, I'm thinking of the classic one is the Thieves Guild. Yeah. Right. There might be competing thieves guild. You can play against each other. It might be like sort of a five family situation where mm -hmm. the, the heads of the thieves guild sit down periodically to discuss the various areas that they they do. This one's into the magical drugs. This one's into mm -hmm. this thieves guilds into you know human and demi human trafficking. <laughs> you know, there's these illegal two, magic. Yeah. <laughs> these two families are airing grievances against each other. Trying, right, trying to keep the truce. Trying to keep the truce, and then the players are thrown in the mix, and, and sort of the calamity and chaos and adventure ensues. Other examples include like mercenary companies. Mm -hmm. Obviously, each one of these organizations is going to lend a certain character to the campaign. The Thieves Guild game of intrigue and backstabbing and, and skullduggery is different than a more military style campaign against, like, say, an evil army or an evil mercenary company that's opposed to you. You know, the advantage of a mercenary company as, as your evil antagonist is that it lends itself well to lots of big set piece battles lots of big fights and having to deal with like logistics and outmaneuvering your enemy and those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Um, but other things include like a wizard's cabal. 
um, you know, a group of wizards that have conspired to, and I use wizard in a generic sense here, a group of spellcasters that are conspiring to take seize control or power from, yeah. from the legitimate rulers. Uh, a dragon cult, not necessarily like cult of the dragon, but yeah. like a dragon who cultivates a cult of personality and, and harnesses people, you know, brings them in, maybe starts creating half dragons or dragon born or something. The dragon cult, uh, you know, they, they live in a mountain somewhere. They live in the deep forest and, and the players are sort of chipping away at it. Why is the dragon trying to do what it's doing? Well, mm -hmm. the dragon's a big thing and when it flies and attacks, it causes a stir, but it's little minions working at the edges of society, mm -hmm. manipulating events, uh, gaining influence and power, inserting themselves in uh, are gonna be a more subtle way and maybe it's too late before everyone realizes that a dragon is controlling things yeah. and, and, and it's uh, seize control. Um, Obviously, we mentioned lich liches and other uh, sorts of monsters might mm -hmm. have uh, mortal allies that they create an organization around, but others include things like Assassin's Brotherhood, uh, you know, Brotherhoods of Assassins, or, yeah. uh, you know, a noble house, or a merchant, um, a, you know, merchant family, or something like that that's trying to seize control of the economy or something. Or just, I mean, you know, sometimes you want to start with just a protection racket. Right. You have a group of strong arms that come in and go, hey, you know what, we can protect you from those others, or, you know. I, and, and this is why I like the Thieves Guild is kind of the, the, um, the, the really the kind of the central focus of it because there's so much you can draw from from crime drama and 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 uh, mafia movies basically mm -hmm. protection rackets gambling smuggling uh, like trade in illegal substances uh, mm -hmm. use of black magic uh, or illegal magic for things and why wouldn't the thieves guild be a part of that yeah. I think that those are some examples of what you're what you can kind of get up to and teenage mutant ninja turtles <laughs> the foot <laughs> the foot. <laughs> I mean, like Come having on. having an organization of ninjas in your campaign that do things that ninjas do. They sneak about. They're mm -hmm. they're jumping from rooftop to rooftop and and uh, giving your players opportunities to fight like a horde of ninjas mm -hmm. as they fight them off. Whether they're like drow or or other sorts of sneaky ninja type. Yeah, uh, but type, the but uh, things. But the levels uh, where you bring kids in that just steal stuff. Right, you bring the kids in. You let them have what they want. Come uh, on, have some come fun. On, hang here. out, hang out in hang our out. warehouse where we got everything for you. Yeah. Have, have any smokes you want, regulars or menthols? Right. <laughs> we got a skate park and yeah. some video games and yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can certainly see that. There's there should be benefits for joining these. And then the other thing is like if depending on what kind of players you've got, you might have uh, you might have players who are want, who who are on the fence about like, well, I might join this group here. Yeah. At legitimately because something that they offer is appealing to my character or me, to me as a player. Yeah. And then you create a, a nice situation for intraparty conflict whether you're into that or not. Or, or the chance for the players to go, yeah, we're gonna bring this thing down from the inside. Yeah. And it's not necessarily undercover to destroy it, but we're gonna take this thing over. And sort of like a Goodfellas kind of like, we're, we're gonna be made men. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the kind of uh, game that you're running. So we could easily do like a whole hour on this show. And this this seems like a good topic for a podcast, oh, man. right? So if uh, if any of our viewers out there are curious about more, um, you know, our podcasts are a lot longer and uh, we go in a bit more in depth. This sounds like one of those we could talk a lot more about, but it's almost time. I could talk all day, man, because it's got to <laughs> end somewhere. So where does it end? It ends with the uh, with either the organization, uh, d you know, disintegrating. Or, or collapsing or something, or, or the goals of that evil organization being thwarted. So returning back to the very beginning, Tyranny of Dragons, from levels one through 15, the players are fighting the cult of the dragon. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the actual dragons themselves, whether, whether it's their uh, allies and the red wizards or, or cult members themselves. But the ultimate goal is to stop Tiamat from, from making her way into the prime material plane. Yeah. But the cult of the dragon doesn't disappear after that. They've been dealt a serious blow. They've, they've, it might take them years to recover, but unless the players have literally killed or eliminated everyone in the cult, someone will, will, will come back. Yeah, and, and, and every worm speaker. Right, <laughs> everywhere purple, yeah. uh, and so this is—it's one of those things where you use an organization because you want some longevity and some resilience to your bad guys, yeah. and a lone bad guy is very vulnerable to yeah. a party. 
uh, and they can easily get the jump on them and and attack them and take them out. Whereas an, uh, a bad guy that has an organization behind them has the resources to recover from a severe defeat from the players, and now you've got a recurring enemy that they can grow to hate and loathe. And then if you're really lucky and you've played your cards right and the campaign's gone well, maybe they turn around and they have to seek out that former enemy to fight an even bigger threat. Yeah. Something like that. Ah, uh, I love it. <laughs> when can I join? Anytime. Chick-fil-A chicken in. <laughs>